in part one, we already exported our character, but I'll go through that process again just so that, that way you have it uh, fresh in your mind in the event that you didn't watch part one as of yet. So we're going to go and export our character. I like to have the Sketchfab com or Sketchfab compatible on, and we'll go ahead and export that out. We're going to call this character Minotaur Base into whatever folder you'd like. It'll go ahead and give us our base character export now. So now we can jump into 3D Exchange, and there we're going to open up the character that we just exported, which is our FBX, and we'll bring that in. It's going to ask us if we want to adjust. We'll say yes. It's going to then ask us if we wanted to create a non-standard character, which we're also going to say yes to once it does. So there we go, and that'll bring then our character onto our screen. So now you see this is the character that we modeled just using Character Creator in part one, and now we're going to do the further enhancements to now the modeling program that I utilize for that is ZBrush and as opposed to doing anything else the the workflow that I use when I'm going to uh, adjust a model as opposed to exporting as an OBJ I want to select the body itself and in my modify tab is utilize the replace mesh, mesh function so I'm gonna go ahead and export the uh, the body and we have it at CC base body it's going to save it as an OBJ file into our folder so we're okay with that which is going to go ahead and successfully export it and now we're ready in ZBrush to bring that in we're going to go over to the import function and go to our folder where we just saved the CC base body there we go and then a simple left click drag brings the model on and we want to make sure we either shortcut T or hit the edit function so we can work on the model. This is all personal preference stuff. What I'm going to do, I'll highlight some key points. I'll do a bit of time lapse modeling uh, for you and show you how to pull it back into 3D Exchange as a result and then we'll get on to the character uh, clothing creation. So I like to just work with skin shaded. It's important to note when you're replacing the mesh using the replace mesh function in 3D Exchange that you don't change the active topology of the model itself. So you can't uh, decimate this model or change it other ways, remove uh, polygons from it because it will not re-import back. So you want to work with the base character as it is for the majority of these items. So here we'll do a shift left click just so I can get my side profile and a control click to bring up a mask. I'm going to start with the hooves because that's a big part. And again, I'll do the uh, the rest of this last little bit. We'll go through some time lapse as I just kind of reshape my model, and then we'll jump back and uh, bring it back into 3D Exchange. back so now we have our completed model that uh, with the adjustments to the body we want to put it back out to 3d exchange and into character creator so that can be our new body morph uh, where so we're done with the the body itself now for for the actual shape so we're just going to go ahead and export it we're going to save it as the CC base body OBJ file again it will ask to replace yes no problem and then we're going to jump back into 3D uh, Exchange and we want to use the replace mesh function so that way we can replace the 
the body, you're going to see it, uh, it change over. This is the old one where we had the feet and the different shape on the head and neck. And once we replace with the CC base body, we're going to keep the original UVs. And there we've got our new shape. Now we want to get this back into Character Creator so that way we can save our Minotaur Morph and have that for future this body shape for whatever. So we're going to go ahead and export it as an FBX. I'm just going to save this as modified, Minotaur Base modified. Include the geometry, embed textures, Z up and centimeters. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. It'll save it to our folder and successfully exported and then we jump into character creator and then we're just going to import and there's our minotaur base modified fbx file for the decrypt key we're going to just load the minotaur base key when we originally did the the export and then we're going to click ok that will then load the project that's going to pop up with the window for us to to check for the teeth and whatnot to make sure everything passes and there we have that everything's passed we're going to go ahead and click OK and now we're going to have our new Minotaur base character is going to be here for us to use for the future and there it is so now you've got the the Minotaur and now it is actually you can actually continue to uh, manipulate this if you so choose but I'm just going to move along and we're going to save it, save it to our custom folders and we'll just call this Minotaur Modified. That way I always have this character now as my, as my base should I ever need to refer back to it if I'm going to come back create more clothes or something like it later. So that's done. So now we have our Minotaur modified, or Minotaur modified character, and we're good to to move on with the next part of the tutorial, which is going through the clothing creation, which is one of my most enjoyable parts. So back in uh, ZBrush, we have our base model, and I'm going to walk you through the process that I use for creating clothing so we've got our base mesh the it's too low poly for creating the the clothing itself I'm, since I'm, I'm I'm done with the the actual remodeling I have my good base model save the OBJ that I can always reload so now it doesn't matter if I tweak this adjust it and do whatever I want to it because I'm gonna just using I'm just using this now as the the base to create it so the first thing that I want to do with it is to uh, change the geometry so we want to increase our poly count so we're going to go over into our modify tab to our geometry tool in the modify tab and we're going to divide it and we'll take a look at it uh, 63,000 255,000 1.1 1.01 million okay so now I've got a much higher obviously polygon uh, model that I can work with so the I'm not obviously going to go through and model everything all at once, but what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to model, model an article of clothing the way that I do it anyways, so that that way you can understand the process. So in this particular scenario, I'm going to make a chest plate for the character. So to do that, we want to center him on our stage, which is a uh, shift left click and turn. So we're going to use the control for the, uh, the mask. And we're just going to left click and first drag up the chest so that way we start getting the area that we want to work with. Then we're going to adjust our draw size. And we're just going to, again, holding down control, we're going to mask out the area that we want to use and to create our chest plate with. So we're going to go under the arms. We'll come out the back side, come over the shoulders and around, down, and again, this is going to be a chest plate, so I don't want to get too much of the arms involved. And again, you can tweak that as necessary. So we've got our mask. 
All right, I'm happy with that one for now. And again, this is a, uh, you'd fine tune this as much as little, spend as much time, but this is just to show you the process utilized. So, okay, I'm good with that for now. So what we'd be doing next, and this is the way we, we pull out using our base model, something that we know is gonna conform and fit. So in the subtool panel, we're gonna drop down to the bottom of it and the extract area. And we want the uh, surface smoothness, I want the surface smoothness to be up at 100. And initially, I like 0.02 because I want it to come off the body because it's, it's a piece of, piece of clothing in this case. It's a piece of chest armor that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to go ahead and extract it. It'll take a little bit of time. I'll just pause it while it goes through that. But we'll go extract and you'll see it'll start smoothing the mesh, micro polishing it, and, uh, and doing what it needs to do to to pull out the, the actual mesh. So I'll just pause that until that completes. So it extracted us. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that extraction. So now you'll see that we have a new uh, subtool on our panel. So I wanna go over to that subtool and we're gonna get rid of our mask first on it. So I wanna work with the whole subtool. So we'll clear off the mask. Now we wanna see the topology of it so we're going to make sure it's selected in our subtool menu and we're going to hit shift F which then brings up the the model itself now the way that I do this is so that I only want a single layer of clothing to work with as you can see here it's got the top layer a wrap and bottom layer so now what we're going to do is if we hit control shift and just click anywhere on the top surface of the model you're going to see that it now everything else underneath was removed so we have just the clean top surface that's what I want to work with so once we've done that we're going to drop to our geometry tab and then we want to go to the modified topology and we want to delete hidden so now we have the actual uh, shape of our of our armor I guess if it will that we're going to work with so as we're going forward now, we've got our our uh, armor model, as it were, chest armor, and I'm going to uh, adjust it a little further. It's very high poly still at this point, so I want to bring it down substantially and start with uh, from scratch or a much lower version, the, the lower version that I'm going to have to create my UV maps for it. So to do that initially, I'll use the Q remesher function. Um, we'll target it, the uh, the actual subtool, and we'll do it, take it down by a half. It's gonna what it's gonna do with this is it adjusts the the actual mapping of it, and it's going to rework it into quads um, for me so that I can get a a, a better a, a tighter model shape when I go to do my UVing. It just simplifies it for me. And again, that will take a, a couple minutes depending on the size of the uh, the model. So again, I'll just pause that while it continues. And you can see on completion then now it's uh, it's adjusted our the mesh itself. I'm going to actually do this a couple more times just to bring it down. Right now we're at 49,000 active points. It goes faster each time once uh, the, based on the size of the model. It uh, it adjusts it a little bit, so it does go quicker with uh, with each version. Uh, as you reduce the the active point count, so I'll still pause it so you don't have to sit through and just wait for the uh, you know the extra minute. So we're okay with that. So now we're going to go into our Z plugin and UV Master, and we're going to just right out of the gate, we're just going to take a look and we want this to have a symmetry on. And we're going to unwrap it to see where it's going to put the uh, the the lines for us for our UV map but it's going to be un unwrapped so take a look and let's see what happens with it so it'll go ahead and unwrap it we go back in and if we want to check seams it's going to show us where it put our seams so if you look this is a seam right down the middle of the front of our of our armor or tunic that's not an ideal location for me. So I'm not happy with where it chose to do that. Because so, if you look in, uh, by going in and checking the flatten, you can see where it is. And I don't mind the flattening, but I don't like the seam to be 
in again the the front because that's where it's opening up the uh, the actual model and when we're doing our texturing I don't like having a seam in there so we're going to go back into our Z plugin and the UV master and we're going to enable control painting and what we want to do is first we're going to protect the area so let's change our sander brush we want Z intensity down to zero because we don't want to actually adjust the mesh and oops and we want to turn on our control painting and so right now we're protecting this area we're telling ZBrush that we do not want a seam in the front of our model where we do want a seam and depending on how you want to lay out your UVs if you want to just have it one wrap I like sometimes to have the um, the model split with the the front and the back so what we want to do is I'm going to now switch over to attract and we're going to put an attract line across the top and down the sides of our model because we're basically telling it to say okay open up the model along these lines so let's see now with the the painting on where it's going to give us our our actual seams. So we'll go ahead and unwrap that again. And now when we check our seams, we have a much better uh, layout, in my opinion, for our UV mapping. So you can see the seam is across the shoulders and down the, uh, the sides on either side. So that means that we get a nice, clean um, texture map, UV map. So when we flatten it out to look at it, you can see, let me hide this guy out, you can see that we have our front and our back that are, uh, are nicely positioned so that when it comes time to, to texturing uh, after the fact, we're in, uh, we're in a good shape for, uh, for making it easy uh, down the road. So I'm quite pleased with that. Unflatten that. So now we have our actual piece of article of clothing created. So the next part of the the tutorial is around creating then the some normal maps some high detailed normal maps doing some texture painting and whatnot so I'm gonna actually use the this article of clothing so we've got it now it's a relatively low poly model we have our UV map um, set on it and now we're gonna start creating some uh, some check texturing and do some normal mapping of it before exporting the uh, the actual item itself so for UV map I want to I'm gonna bump it up a little bit and uh, make it at 4096 now again these are the, the way that I like to to do the actual modeling is I don't think there is really a, a right way or a wrong way so we're gonna Go ahead and now with our our geometry, same thing. I want to now create a a much more high detailed uh, version of the actual model itself, so we can do some sculpting on it. So for that, we're going to divide it up, and I'm I'm looking at my axe points because this way I can get some much better uh, detail into it. You know, we're at uh, five subdivision layers you know what I'm, I'm okay with that for for now I'm gonna look at it and now I have a couple of different ways of doing some texture painting modeling one of the uh, the ways that I like to do it is bringing in my uh, different textures that I might be using on the the model itself importing them into my scene so for this one we're going to make it just a kind of a rusty rusty metal uh, if it were for our base of the uh, the model itself so we're gonna go to my texture folder where and again you'll have uh, stuff wherever you have it but uh, I'm gonna go down and find the the actual base texture that I want to use for my uh, my character or for the the chest plate itself and once we've got it there it is so I'm going to bring that into my ZBrush scene. So now, if I want to start painting on the 
the actual model. I can again. I'm on my high poly version, so I've uh, got to go into my poly paint. I want to make sure that we're colorized. I have my uh, my mRGB set up. I have the RGB intensity at 100, and I don't want to have any Z intensity at this point. So I'm going to bring that down to zero. So on the side now we've got our different brush strokes. What I'm going to do is I want to do the drag and I want to set up the alpha so it's got a bit of a uh, the fade the fade off. So now what I can do and I'm going to turn off my symmetry at this point. Now what I can do is with a left click and holding I can actually draw and paint my texture onto my model and again this is my the base texture that I'm using so I don't need it to be uh, too perfect because we're going to do some other things uh, to the model uh, afterwards anyways. So this just gives me that the ability to give my my model the, the base starting point that I want it to have. So now that we have our chest plate we're just going to do some time lapse uh, texturing and, and modeling on it so that we can get to the the normal map and texture map creation for you for export. And we're back. So, again, just some quick uh, modeling. It's not uh, super clean, uh, just from an interest of uh, of time perspective. The but I wanted to get some uh, difference in the the depth of the model and stuff, the details, so that way we can create our normal map and uh, texture map and show you how that's done. So that's what we're going to uh, to do with this. Now that it's uh, complete, we'll just give it a quick save. So. To create the first the texture map, we want to be on our highest level of geometry. And then we're going to go down to texture map. We're going to do a create and create from polypaint, new from polypaint. That's going to then go ahead and take everything that we just did and put it into our texture map. We then clone it and we can now see that it's, uh, that it's populated over into our texture. Because of the uh, the axis, we just want to flip the the texture map itself on the vertical axis, and then we're going to go ahead and export it so that way we have our texture map. And so we can call this uh, chest piece diffuse, and we'll just save it right away as a as a JPEG is fine for now. Okay, so we've got our good diffuse map done. And now we're going to do the, the normal map. So to do the normal map, you want to go up into the geometry and you actually want to go down to the lowest uh, resolution of the model itself. And you'll see that we're going to still, our texture map is still going to stay um, strong in the actual, uh, on the actual uh, model. But because we're going for the uh, super low poly version, you can see it's kind of, kind of rough with the actual um, detail. So we don't actually need that anymore. So we're on our lowest level and we'll go ahead then to our uh, normal map itself. We've got the uh, the tangent additive, uh, adaptive, sorry, smooth UV and uh, the S normals. And you're going to then go ahead and create the normal map. That'll take a, uh, a second while it uh, does the, uh, the subdivision between the different uh, different levels. It won't take too long though because then we don't have a, a crazy um, super large sized uh, model. So now we've got the uh, the normal map and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the uh, texture map. We're going to just uh, clone it and once we've got it in our texture panel we're going to flip the vertical on it 
and then we're going to go ahead and export that normal map as well the same way so we will call this uh, chest piece normal and save it out so now we've got uh, we can see our normal map that's been created and we're going to go ahead and now again we don't need the uh, the roughness from because we have the normal map already created so we're just going to hold down shift and left click and smooth out our model a little bit where we have the uh, the bit of a uh, of roughness because we have our detailed texture map and the normal map it'll just uh, make our model that much cleaner when we get it out back into iClone so we'll go ahead and do that and we can smooth out all of those uh, any of those areas that we that we really want so that way we just have a, uh, a nicer, a cleaner model on the export side of the, uh, the fence. Okay. So with that now, and with our lowest um, subdivision selected, we're going to go ahead and export the, the chest piece as an OBJ. So we'll just call this chest piece. And then if we go into 3D Exchange, we're going to be able to take a look at our chess piece with the uh, the low poly chess piece, but with the, the texture map and the normals on it. We'll just go ahead and open that up. We want our chess piece. It's going to populate it into 3D Exchange for us. So we can give it a quick uh, real-time smooth. And we can then in turn two-sided so now we've got our article of clothing that we're ready to bring in we want to throw the normal map that created onto it <clears throat> and then we're gonna see a big difference in terms of the detail so the normal map then picked up all of the 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 detail the pores uh, and the the modeling that we did with the actual um, article of clothing and again it's it's rudimentary and rough but just for the purpose of the tutorial and now we're going to have our finished model we can uh, save this back out you can save that back out it's ready for uh, for import into 3ds max for the uh, for the actual clothing which is going to be uh, tutorial number three so we're back in ZBrush now and we've talked about how to create our own clothing and texture that but we haven't talked about doing the actual character creator model itself for texturing. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll go into our subtool menu and we're just going to hide our, our metal shirt and we're going to work on the character itself. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our geometry. We're going to go down to our lowest subdivision of the model itself and delete anything higher. And then if we shift F, we're going to just bring up the, the mesh itself so we can see it. And it's important to note that Reillusion has their UV islands in uh, five different parts on the body. They have the body which consists of the arms legs, hands, and feet. They have one that is the fingernails, they have one that's the toenails, and they have one for the head, which is the head, uh, lips, eyes, and then they have one for the eyelashes as well. So we need to work on a model that has just those parts um, visible, so that that way when we create our texture maps, we're able to, in turn, use them and uh, directly import them onto the Reillusion character. So to do that, we want to first go to our polygroups and we want to auto group with UVs. That's going to then bring up any islands and colorize them for us so we can see the different islands. Now, you can see though the way that it auto groups them is that it doesn't have them as the in the way that we need it. So we need to see to work on in this case just the body. So we need to actually delete any of the other islands that are that we don't want to to work on so to do that we're just going to go ahead and it's a very straightforward uh, process 
we're just going to control shift and select one of the those islands in this case we'll start with the fingernails and we're going to go ahead and delete anything that is not associated with the hands legs body uh, torso or feet so i'll just pause this as i go around and do that so we've gone and deleted all the other <clears throat> oh, so once they're hidden we just go to delete hidden and i had already just done the function so it then removes all of those other meshes. So now all we're left with is the body, which includes the feet, the arms, and the, the hands. And we can see this by going to Z plugin, and if we flatten out our UVs, we'll be able to see this is the same UV island layout that Reillusion uses for the character. So now we're good to go. So we want to paint directly on the character. If we shift F to get back to our clean slate. Now we can go ahead in our geometry and we can divide to get to a higher detail level if we want to paint on the, the character itself. I'm gonna just do uh, anything for, for the purpose again of the, the tour, just to show you how we can then adjust and paint right on the, the character. Again, we're gonna add our MJ and we're gonna reduce our, our Z add. We'll bring the drag and we'll put our brush up and now we want to go over to our poly paint so that we can colorize our actual model and we can paint directly onto the Reillusion model itself. So because we have the higher res and again we're just using the the base uh, texture you can see that we can then create any type of detailed texturing that we want. We can change that up and we want to you know do whatever you want to do as far as uh, your texture painting, if you want to use just colors, if you don't want to use textures. But again, I'm just doing this from a standpoint of showing you how to go through the actual process of texturing your model in ZBrush itself for use right on the actual model. And then you can in turn uh, adjust it and do whatever you want with it. So. Now we go the same process, we paint our textures on, we want to go to our texture map and we want to create a new texture. We're in our highest subdivision, so we're going to create from poly paint. So that then created our texture, we want to clone our texture the same way as we did before. And then we want to flip it on its vertical. And now we have an actual body diffuse map that we can then replace our on our actual character in character creator we'll save that as a, as a JPEG so we can apply the same process for creating a normal map that we can then use in Unreal Illusions character in either character creator or in iClone itself so and again you're gonna then if you're going to be working on the any details of the the body itself go to your highest uh, subdivision and let's say we want to put pores onto our character here into the mesh itself we want to make his the skin itself more pebbly let's say and again I'm just uh, using this as an example we can create those the, the pores in the uh, the skin and you can really do whatever you'd like if you wanted to to create a, a scars or if you wanted to create something like you know even a, a, an, an arrow shaped into the the skin itself you can do whatever you need to do and then when you're going to export you're going to do the same process that we applied to the clothing you're going to go down to your lowest resolution geometry and for our normal map, then we're going to go ahead and create it. Turn on our adaptive and create our normal map. And that'll give us uh, our projection over a little bit of time. So we get our normal map created. We clone it. Again, following the exact same procedure, we want to flip the vertical. And then we're going to export. And now we have the body. And we'll call that our normal so we've exported our own new normal map over top that we can then use for 
over top of Reillusions. So that brings the tutorial part two to a close. We're going to have part three, which will put all this together and show you how to bring it into 3ds Max and then back into Character Creator for the finished product. So I hope you enjoyed watching and look forward to seeing you in part three.